welcome to Kate's Egg. Today is the first official full day of harvest on our Montana farm, and I hope to take you along for it. We are getting the combines ready right now. Now we're getting everything ready for the morning, and this is what we found in my dad's tire. Okay which is so crazy, so we're gonna have to find a way to get it out. My dad's all the way at the top there, and I'm here with Arvid, and you're going to be running our other combine, which is super exciting. Yeah. We're happy to have you on the team. Since I haven't run one before for a long time, it'll be interesting. Yes, that sounds awesome. Is it G-N-A-X-L? I don't know, it's upside down. Uh, 12 ply, um, 25, no, that's not the number. Oh, 18. Eight. Oh, there's a ladder here too. I got a rear tire on a 9870 that's got a big piece of metal in the tread, but when we wiggle it around, it leaks air. So I, I think I gotta um, maybe either fix it or put a new one on that. What size is that tire? 18426, does that sound right? No, it's a it's a traction tread, it's a rear tire. I'm gonna have Kate hold my phone so it doesn't lose reception and then I'll go down and look. Hello, are you still there? Okay, it will just be one moment. I'm Mark's okay. daughter, Kate, nice to meet you. Oh, is it? Well, hello yeah. again. Yeah. You know me then. 18, yeah. four, dash 26. What yeah. ply rating? 12. 12. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Let me. We only get reception on the very, very top of the combine. Okay. Where are you at? On the top of the combine. Well, and then you take a left, and then you take another left at the next time you can take a left. Oh, one moment. Until the no road turns yeah, north. My dad's coming up. <laughs> Here you go. Can you hear me? This is not a good scenario at all. Yikes. We're gonna have to probably replace this tire. It's still got really good tread on it too, which is not good because <laughs> tires for combines are super expensive. We also have the disc at the field and the water truck and the fuel pickup right here. That's my combine right there. Here's the middle one that Arvid's going to learn how to drive. There's my dad's. So this is kind of what a harvest morning routine would look like. We have to fuel, blow out the filters, take a general check over the combine to make sure there's not a massive piece of metal in the wheel, things like that. Have you blown out filters? I'm not blowing. You'd have to be going super fast to plug anything up in this year. Yeah. <laughs> now I've come to the pickup to pick up my two Kating tote bags right here and put them in my combine as well as my water jug. You have to carry a lot of water with you on the combine because it's very important to stay hydrated. Hi, Steve. Good, thank you. How are you? Dad has a big metal piece of metal in his wheel. Yeah, so we're gonna, in the back right wheel. You'll have to check it out. It's the far combine back right tire. It's pretty crazy. I'm just getting in my combine now to start it up. So let's see. Good, my dad's in the combine with Arvid. I'm gonna turn the heat down a little bit because it's warm out. I have this backrest because your back can get very sore driving combine. So now I'll put my steering wheel down. I'm just going to raise my header really quickly and wait until my dad's ready to go. The combine does need a few minutes to warm up. So I'll just wait for that. Right now my dad's probably explaining what the buttons do and kind of the whole panel here just to get our bird kind of familiar with them before the combine's in action. It's a lot easier to already have an idea of what all of this is about before you start trying to apply it. I have my Kateig shirt on again today. I absolutely love it. The cotton is very nice and of course it's grown and sewn in the USA and you're able to track where it came from and the people you supported when purchasing the shirt, which was so important to me. So it looks like my dad's getting ready to go. I also have my Kateig tote bag here in the cab with me. Kate, are you running? Yes. Okay, we'll, we'll just start cruising towards the field. You can just follow me, Kate. All right, sounds good, thank you. Now my dad's going through the motions of lifting and lowering the header. We are cutting with a 16-foot pickup header 
And basically what this is for is when you swath the wheat into windrow, you're able to just pick it up from the swaths. A lot of times you'll see combine headers with 40 foot or 35 foot really big headers with teeth that move back and forth like this. And then that just eliminates the swathing process, so you're directly cutting the wheat from the field. Both are used for wheat and the same crops, but a lot of times, and we also have both of those headers for our combines, a lot of times we choose to swath because of a bug called sawfly that burrows into the wheat and makes it fall over. And when you're picking up with the straight cutting header, you can't go all the way on the ground and dig up dirt and rocks into your header trying to get this wheat up and you lose a high percentage of your crop. So if you're able to swath it before it falls down, then you don't lose that crop. We still straight cut barley and spring wheat usually, but for the most part, we swath all of our winter wheat. And there really is no remedy for sawflies yet. The only thing that has been developed is a solid stem variety of wheat, but the solid stem variety still falls down. So it's best just to swath for now. I'll rev my combine up and follow dad out to the field. Gosh, my dad's going really slowly. Maybe just so he can teach. I like to drive fast in the fields though. It's a bit of a problem. We cut all of this field yesterday, so now we're moving on to the far corner of this field, which we'll probably be working on until noon, and then we'll move to another field. I think it's going to take many, many years to get out to this field at this speed. We are driving six miles per hour. I think that beep was just because I pressed the check mark on the two air buttons I got on my little screen here which is called a command center. And it has all of these little buttons that change between screens. I don't know what a lot of them mean. If you would like to purchase a Kate's Egg grown and made in the USA shirt, you can visit my website, katesegg.com. That's K-A-T-E-S-A-G.com. I have both men's and women's. I think now my dad's going full speed. Oh, there's antelope running away from the field over there. Oh, and we still, we're almost done with this part of the field, but we still have this half. My uncle swathed them in 80 acre pieces so that we wouldn't get full on the wrong side of the field because we don't have a grain cart. So we had an 80 piece and 80, which makes 160, and then an 80 and an 80. So four sections in this field, um, which makes a 320 acres. So the way land is divided up in Montana is it all, everything starts with a section, and a section is 640 acres. So some of our fields are a full section, but some are half sections, 320 acres, or some are quarter sections, 160 acres. But everything we go by is by sections. This is a half section, a quarter section, that's a quarter over there, that's a half, things like that. So when you hear those types of terms, that's what they mean. My dad is now just stopped in front of his row, explaining things to Arvid about how to start the combine, that you want it idled down before you put the back and the header in, and then you want to idle it back up, and just giving a lesson. So I'll start my row here pretty soon. I'll just line up a bit more. I'll actually probably just wait until he starts his next row, because this is such a short row here, it's not even really worth it. So I'll idle my machine down, put the back in, put the front in, rev it back up. Put my header down. Oh, it looks like, is my dad still driving? Yes, I think he is. It usually takes a good day or a couple days to do combine lessons, but because Arvid's already familiar with farming and combines, he'll probably just take a couple laps or a day. These combines are very expensive and also super big. You want to be safe with them and make sure you're operating them properly and you also don't want to break them. My dad's taking his next row right now. Because we're getting to the end part of this field, there are no more side rows, so I'll just start on east headed row. Now my dad's got the auger of the combine out. <laughs> I thought that's so funny because we don't have a grain cart. Oh, now he's putting it back in. Now Arvid and my dad have stopped to switch seats, which is kind of cool. I know he'll do well. And my combine is slowly moving backwards, so I've got to put it a little bit forward past its neutral position to stay here. Just past Dad and Arvid. Oh, Dad, Jake, you're going. I know, I was just, just give me a second. Now I'm going to dump in the truck. So I'm lining up to wall right now. And I'm unloading my grain. Do you want me to wait or go into the next part of the field? Just wait, Kate, until I get here. wonder why my dad's pickup door is open. 
My dad's doing his movements like this with the combine. Wonder if he's gonna put his auger back in. So now we're starting this next 80 acre piece and we're driving over there now. I wasn't completely sure where we were going to start. I maybe thought on the other end, but it looks like in this middle part here. It's 1117 right now. So we should finish this other 80 acres hopefully soon. We've only got the two combines running. Dad's is broken down. We have our tire guy coming out to take a look at it and see if it's something that we can fix or if we'll just have to get a complete new tire. My dad was telling me this morning he just wants to get done with this field because of how bad it is. My next row will be the second one to his. I was just going to drive over both of these wheat slots, but I don't really need to do that, so I'll just go around the first one. I may have to drive over the second one, but I can just kind of probably squeeze in there. So that's what I'll try and do. We do want to conserve as much of the wheat crop as we can because there's not much of it here. I mean, this field in total is probably averaging around six bushels, maybe 10. So I'm just starting slowly, kind of turning my combine and then picking up the row straight eventually. I'm definitely really tired this morning because we did have a late night finishing in the field, field but I think after the third day passes your body kind of adjusts to the new routine and it's just hardest to stay awake in the cab for the first three days i've found in my past harvests my dad just stopped the combine and got out so i'm not sure if something's 